frequent comments about a Thera Mini is in regards to its response off of the volume loop. It's described by many people as soupy, very difficult to get bup, 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 clean staccato, clean articulation on notes. And there are two techniques which, when working in tandem with one another, can help you overcome that limitation. It will never be quite as responsive as a standard ether wave or some of the other Moog ether waves, but you will be able to get a cleaner response. In order to explain this to you, we have to go close up. So here we are in close up. If you'll cast your mind way back to the first tutorial, you may recall when demonstrating how to calibrate the theremin initially on the near volume that is when you press setup and hold your hand close to the volume loop for your near volume. I recommended setting that hand distance at about two to two and a half inches. And I also explained that I would explain why. So here's the explanation. When you are whoa, when you are <laughs> when you are playing the theremini and you are trying to articulate notes, most of the time people are using a flat hand. And you're, can you hear the sort of, we call it a soupy response, the, the, uh, the decay of the note is not sudden. It's sort of like, yeah, listen. It's not bad, but if you start trying to play an actual rhythm, Are you hearing that double? That is because when you are trying to do sudden attack and decay, watch what happens in my left hand. Watch very closely. Are you seeing that it bounces? I lift up and try to set it down again to dampen the note, but my hand bounces up just slightly. And as I'm moving from note to note, doesn't sound really clean, really definite. That's partially because my hand is bouncing, so you're getting a residual sound that you don't need. The reason for setting that near volume at about two to two and a half inches is very intentional. Take a look. If I put my hand in my control space while keeping my volume hand about an eighth of an inch from the volume loop, Watch how long it takes before you'll hear sound. That's about an inch, it's about two inches, and there you start to hear sound. Right at about the two inch mark. What this space of silence does for you is allow you to offset the bounce in your hand by taking your ring finger and your third finger, the middle finger, and actually dipping them into the loop. Uh, for lack of a better term, I call this the dip. Now you have a place for that hand to bounce, but you've got two inches of silence before it'll make a sound. So you will get a cleaner note. practicing without worrying about what type of pitch you want to hit. Simply use your wrist. Look, the forearm, the elbow are not really moving, but I'm dipping. Can you see how far down I'm dipping my hand in? Now, eventually, as you get more comfortable with this, you probably will not dip your fingers down as far, but for now, it's a good idea to exaggerate what you're doing. So experiment with the notes first. Makes no difference what the pitch is. Just make sure you move your hand and hold it still before lifting your volume hand up so you don't get a, a slide. 
Really practice snapping that wrist up and back. The bounce is covered because you're dipping your fingers down in. Next, try basic rhythms. You can go up or down the scales. Don't even worry about playing a scale. Ascend and descend through that control space. Start slow. Then experiment with some rhythms. Simple rhythms. Not too fast, not too slow. The second technique for articulation, which can be combined with the first technique of the dip, is called the bite. I call it the bite only because it reminds me of uh, if those of you who might remember Pac-Man going along eating the little dots. And it's simply a bite. Do you hear that every time it's open? Every time it's open, you hear a second note. So it sounds like doo 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 doo. However, the more rapidly you do it, the more subtle it sounds. To combine it with the volume hand, the open mouth coincides to when the volume hand is dipping into the loop and the closed mouth is when you lift up. Listen to the difference between the sounds. Just using the dip Now the dip with the bite. Do you notice the difference in cleanliness of that note? It's slightly sharper. are going to take some practice and you'll notice that as they become second nature you'll begin using them at various times during songs that you play to get the effect that you want the main thing is to practice them try to incorporate them into things that you want to play next time I'm going to talk to you about a technique that this theremin was built for to help you with ear training and it's going to be a very brief video because the one after that, we are going to do one of the deepest dives into what this machine can do. But next time, a quick video on ear training. See you then.